What is up guys? Shweddy Cacus here. Just got back from a big long walk with the puppy and it's the perfect time to talk about some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news. Courtesy of the Bungie Weekly Update that has just gone live unveiling official information. And there is some massive changes coming with Armor 2.0 you're definitely going to want to know about. But some un-Destiny related news, I was lucky enough to cover two sweet new games. Uh, firstly, The Division 2 and its Warlords of New York expansion going over that new content and talking about the massive loot overhaul coming to that game and also the brand new next-gen looter shooter Outriders. I was able to preview that and talk about that game as well. So if you want to check out those two different games, I would definitely appreciate it, especially if you could drop a like, because anytime I make anything non-Destiny 2 related, I get so many people being like, why don't you go back to Destiny 2, you piece of trash, every non-Destiny game is garbage. But those are the same people that complain there's nothing to do in Destiny 2. Wouldn't you guys want a sweet other game you could play when Destiny 2 is in a lull? But <laughs> I digress. Anyways, let's talk about the D2 stuff. So, of course, this week it's all about the Fronkdaline. Of course, the Stonks meme has just applied so perfectly to the Imperium Foundation event. Something I want to mention is something I was doing almost all day yesterday, and that was investing in light-infused Fronkdaline. So, light-infused Fronkdaline is going to cost 20,000 Glimmer and 10 Legendary Shards. I mentioned this in a video, but essentially what happens is that when Spider is selling Glimmer for a certain resource and also selling that resource for a Legendary Shard apiece, you basically get one light infused Fractaline for only 18 legendary shards. And these light infused Fractaline, when you're turning them in, they're gonna give you the new seasonal armor and they're also gonna give you world drop legendaries. And I was able to get a bunch of sweet old fashions and even my best last hope yet, although it wasn't the god roll. And I turned in 500 of them, which means I'm gonna get 50 thousand additional Fractaline. I'm up to 75,000 Fractaline every single weekly reset. Now, of course, that's unachievable for a lot of people out there, but remember, if you're spending your resources on light infused Fractaline, you're getting so much more normal polarized Fractaline every week, you can spend that polarized Fractaline on just leveling up the obelisks even more to get those world drop legendaries even more if you want it. But of course, the debate between investing and donating is heated. I think right now you can probably start turning a little bit more towards donate. However, if you want to be as efficient as possible, you still want to invest. Additionally, something interesting is that Bungie is actually tracking the overall Fractaline donated, and here is the chart. We're up to 3.5 billion. You can see that massive jump comes from the weekly reset when everyone gets their new Fractaline and then starts donating again. But pretty interesting, and it's also interesting that the previous goal was an 800 million increase, and then this one went from 3 billion to 6 billion, so a 3 billion increase. Bungie seemingly has some like algorithm to try to find the optimal time where we're going to complete this goal and no one really knows what the next goal is going to be but they have been wildly unpredictable so far. Okay, moving on from there, let's talk about the huge armor 2.0 changes coming next season. So, firstly, elemental affinities. This has been one of the main complaints of armor 2.0. You finally get the perfect piece with a good stat roll that you want it's from the right season and oh it's you know void and you wanted arc and you're screwed well starting next season you're actually going to be able to change the elemental affinity on any piece of armor to either of the other two affinity types directly from the items inspection screen by hovering your cruiser over the armor's energy icon Bungie says that this is intended to mitigate the experience of getting an armor drop with the stat roll you want, but of course with the wrong affinity. Changing an armor affinity type will cost one upgrade module. If your armor is already upgraded to a higher energy level, the cost will be the total upgrade materials necessary to reach that energy value plus one upgrade module. So switching is still going to have a cost and from reading this it seems like it's best to switch right away. So it's not going to be a system where you have a, a god tier piece of armor 
and you're just changing the affinity willy-nilly. No, it seems like the more efficient and the proper way, at least according to Bungie's uh, eyes, of doing this is to, as soon as you get that piece of armor, before you level it up, you change its affinity to what you're looking for, and then you level it up. But regardless, that is a hugely positive change and it will reduce the strain of Armor 2.0 immensely, but there's more. Now we're talking about seasonal mods. Of course, depending on what season you get the armor from, you can socket some very important seasonal mods, even pre-Shadow Keep, stuff like Taken Armaments, Fallen Armaments. You're still really, really looking for armor from those previous seasons so you can slot those mods. But of course, things are getting exponentially more problematic when every season we have a batch of new seasonal mods and you have to get elemental affinities of all of them. So the change coming here is that starting next season, the seasonal armor mod socket will also be able to use mods released during the seasons before and after the armor piece was released. Wow. They say, for example, armor with a mod socket from Season of Dawn can now equip Dawn mods, Undying mods from Season of the Undying, and the next season, Season of the Redacted's mods as well. So another, jeez, I really didn't expect they would do this, but that is another absolutely colossal change. They're opening up the seasonal mod slot. So coming next season, you won't necessarily need to get the new season's armor for when, you know, the season of trials or whatever it's called. You won't need to get whole new armor sets of different elements. You can use your existing armor sets and still equip the new season's mods. And now, if you're sitting there with like a god tier season of dawn helmet starting next season, you're going to be able to put, you know, fallen armaments, taken armaments from those previous seasons on as well. Absolutely fantastic change. Now it's way more worth specking into a really good armor build and master working that armor. If you have some great armor rolls, now might be the time to master work because you can equip these mods from all over the place. So armor 2.0 just got a whole lot user friendly starting next season. But moving on from there, the next thing we're going to talk about is the next Iron Banner arriving to Destiny 2. So, the next Iron Banner and an accompanying Valor bonus, so your Valor is going to level up so much faster when Iron Banner is active, this is all going to start at 9am Pacific on February 18th. So as soon as Crimson Days is over, Iron Banner begins, and of course it ends the following reset. And this is the last Iron Banner of Season of the Dawn. Bungie says this is your last shot to finish your Iron Banner quest this season and pick up any pinnacle rewards from Iron Banner bounties. Equip your best gear and control those zones. And the last thing I'm going to mention is Hotfix 2.7.1.2 was released earlier today and thankfully it didn't delete anyone's currency this time, but it did fix the infinite Dawnblade super glitch. Uh, that was an issue for a while in PvP. Essentially, you would get Dawnblade, you just switch your weapons, and your Dawnblade would last forever for the rest of the match. I obviously didn't want to talk about this because it was annoying enough as it was. Thankfully, that's fixed. So if you've been avoiding the Crucible, now you can go in without being Dawn... Well, you can you're still going to get Dawnblade, but just not infinitely. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content, so much this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.